climbing gyms closed and the world on lockdown, we look to do our part for the collective good by going into self-quarantine. While this may be a time of stagnant uncertainty, it can also be a time for rebalancing and rebuilding. In the past year, I've grown into a better climber, but I'll also admit that I've declined as an athlete. Being focused on one sport has drawn my attention away from the things that got me here. Now, with this sudden abundance of time, I hope to reconnect with some familiar movement patterns. This video will go over a workout you can do at home with minimal equipment. The aim is to improve full body strength and mobility. That way, when this is over, we can return to the climbing gym as better functioning, well-balanced athletes. Our first exercise are push-ups. Warm up in the top position with 10 external rotations of the arms, making sure the pits of the elbows face forward. Finish the warm up with 5 push ups with a slow and controlled descent. Beginners can opt for the knees down variation to reduce the weight. The further back you set your knees, the less support is given. Intermediate folks can perform normal push ups. I prefer elbows in with external rotation of the hands to protect the shoulders. Advanced practitioners can do the lizard variation, which is a precursor to the one-arm push-up. From a regular push-up position, set your right foot to a position of 3 o'clock. We use the right foot to oppose the left hand which will do the pushing. Make sure the toes are facing out instead of up. From here, slowly lower into a one-arm push-up, making sure that your weight is distributed evenly between your pushing hand and your planted foot. If you prefer to add another point of support, use your free hand to push up on your knee. When we switch to the other side, plant your left foot to a position of 9 o'clock. The right hand now does the pushing. The next exercise is the handstand walk. We'll warm up by first doing some wrist circles, 8 in each direction. Finish off with a downward facing dog, opening the chest and shoulders. Find a wall with a decent amount of surrounding space and remember to remove your socks. Start in a push up position and set your feet on the wall. Walk your feet up while walking your hands towards the wall. Make sure to maintain scapular elevation by pushing the floor away the whole time. Beginners can perform one walk with a 10 second hold. Make sure to walk back out to finish in the starting position. Intermediates can do two walks, holding at the top for three seconds. To link the walks, avoid touching down your feet when in push-up position. If you want to really push it, challenge yourself by adding a third walk. Make sure you have enough gas in the tank, or you may risk collapsing on your arms. Bridge rotations are one of my favorite exercises as it focuses on full spine articulation while also opening the shoulders and chest. Start by warming up in crab position for 20 seconds. Focus on lifting the hips and keeping the torso parallel to the floor. Follow that with sphinx pose, slowly retracting the scapula and gently opening the thoracic and lumbar spine. Set up for this exercise by standing one arm's length away from the wall. Place one hand on the wall and make a sweeping motion with the other arm before setting the second hand in line with the first, keeping your eyes on the hand you are setting down. Make sure not to sag your hips, using the bend of your spine to keep your body pushed away from the wall. Intermediate folks can transfer this movement to the floor. Perform up to a three-quarter rotation without setting down the second hand. Return back to crab position, switch hands, and repeat. Once you're comfortable with this movement, you can work on setting down the second hand and completing the rotation. Make sure to use the sweeping motion to both enter into and exit the bridge. Next is the tuck planche, one of the most effective static hold exercises. We'll first warm up with 10 reps of scapular push-ups. 
Make sure to keep the arms straight and body tense while protracting and retracting the shoulder blades. For beginners, use a higher surface like chairs or bar stools. Protract the scapula to push the floor away while tucking the knees to your chest. Feet are allowed to dip slightly below the hands. For intermediate folks, focus on leaning forward slightly and elevating the hips. Try to bring your feet level or above your hands. Feel free to do these on push-up bars or parallettes if you have them. Advanced practitioners should perform the tuck planche directly on the floor. Rotate your hands outward with the fingers angled at 45 degrees to protect your wrists. Lean forward, push hard, and lift your feet completely off the floor. We'll continue with static holds with the L-sit next. Flexibility is an important component of this exercise, so we'll warm up with a 30 second forward fold. Feel free to make the stretch active and dynamic by adding some gentle swinging. For the beginner, you'll need a high surface such as chairs or bar stools. Perform the sit with knees tucked as high as you can. Keep the arms straight and lean slightly forward. The next step is to straighten the legs. Flex your quadriceps and tighten your core. It's okay if your feet are slightly below the hands, as long as you maintain straight legs. The last step is to bring those legs level with the hands. This requires a high level of tension and compression. To help with bringing your feet up, fold deeper at the hips and lean forward. Now we'll move on to the legs. The pistol squat is one of the best exercises for building strength, stability, and range of motion. We'll warm up by first completing 10 slow bodyweight squats, going full range to where the hips travel below the knees. Next, we'll get accustomed with the end range position by shifting our weight onto one foot while extending the other. Hold for 10 seconds and repeat until you've done each leg twice. The challenge with learning the pistol squat is using a good scaling method. I found a rolling pistol squat to be the most effective as it utilizes momentum and does not compromise the range of motion of the movement. Beginners will perform the rolling pistol squat to bottom position with one leg extended. Hold the position for a few seconds before setting the foot back and performing a regular squat. Lower and repeat with the other leg. Intermediate folks will perform the rolling to stand variation. Use the momentum of the roll to assist with the standing of the pistol squat. Make sure to hit the bottom position before standing straight up instead of leaning too far forward and losing your form. The final version is to perform strict pistol squats. Focus on maintaining a slight external rotation of the leg to ensure the knee does not track inward. Squeeze the thighs together to maintain form and tension. Pull-ups are the final exercise for this workout. We may not all have access to a pull-up bar at home, so this can be done separately when you go for your outdoor walk. Warm up by doing 5 slow scapular shrugs. Make sure to elevate and depress the shoulder blades fully, taking about 3 seconds per rep. If you're new to pull-ups, you can start with jumping negatives. Find a bar that you can grip with your feet still on the floor or on an elevated surface. Jump up to where your chin is above the bar and lower down as slowly as you can. Touch down and repeat. Intermediate and advanced folks can perform strict pull-ups, focusing on form and control. Vary your rep range anywhere from 6 to 10 reps. This completes the home workout. I hope you benefit from these exercises and use this time as an opportunity to rebalance and rebuild. Please stay healthy, take care of your loved ones, and until next time, move better, climb harder.